This doesn't look like New York City, does it? Well, it's not. But uh, it definitely is Florida, and it's definitely a little paradise. I'm on a little mini vacation, but uh, today so I'm going to cool. teach you how to ride. Unless you get. So is yours. Well, people in Florida do love uh, technology they've never seen. <laughs> but today we're here to learn how to ride an electric unicycle. This is a video I've been asked to make for a long time. I figure since I'm on this little, we'll call it vacation, uh, this would be the perfect time to do this. Uh, so yeah, let's make it happen. Coming alive. First off, let me just say, I'm not really wearing any gear right now because I'm going to be riding very slow and sort of teaching you, but definitely when you ride, when you learn to ride, you should wear, at the very least, a helmet and some wrist guards. I have it broken down into a few sections of how you're gonna to learn to ride an electric unicycle. Most people, when I've taught them, even like the first two steps, they said revolutionized how fast they could learn. So I really believe in this. Um, I contemplated making this like a paid for thing, but I figured, you know what? My whole mantra for my channel is to give back to the community, so I'm just gonna put it out there for free on YouTube. But small plug, if you wanna help support this channel, you can go to patreon.com and give as little or as much as you want monthly. Or I think you can do like a one-time thing, but it's I think it's patreon.com slash EVX. Um, there's a link down below no matter what. So go ahead over there and support this channel if you can. Anyways, back to the list, here it is. So first we're gonna start off with the half moon exercise. Um, maybe it's because I'm based in New York, but uh, I keep wanting to shoot out in like the middle of the road here and not in like the neighborhood area over there. Like there's nicer streets down there you can see in the neighborhood, but I'm just, a, I don't know, I'm, I'm like a traffic kind of guy. So we're gonna shoot this right here, just like in the road, so. All right, the first thing when you're mounting, um, just like any kind of sport, uh, you gotta pick a dominant foot. And for me, I'm sort of in that like righty, slight, slightly ambidextrous category. Uh, so basically, I feel most comfortable. You just pick what's comfortable for you. With my right foot as the dominant foot. And uh, what that means for the EUC realm is that's the foot you will stand on to always be mounting and dismounting. Um, so the first thing I would say is get your foot on there basically even between the front and the back. You're going to have some overhang to some varying degree depending on your foot size with your toe and heel or one or the other, but just try to be centered on there. You may probably start on a wheel that's a lot less large, but the concepts pretty much apply. So what you're going to want to do is sort of learn how to lock your foot and leg against the side of the shell. Uh, so this right foot here because it's a taller shell it's a little bit easier I think when you're learning this concept um, but you're gonna put pressure down and out on your foot so it's pushing down a little bit and then put pressure with your calf towards or like lower up just above your ankle area depending on the size of your wheel in towards the shell so you learn how to like just lock your leg against it once you lock your leg in you're gonna keep this uh, off foot the foot that's not on it planted on the ground and you're gonna do a half moon around it. It's not like a full 180, but pretty close to it. What this is teaching you is like, A, how to sort of balance on this leg alone, and then B, which is mainly like what you're doing here, is you're learning how to control the wheel with one leg, with one foot. This is pivotal to this entire experience. It looks like you're doing everything with one foot, or we're sorry, with two feet, but a lot of it is learning how to, you know, control the wheel with one leg, whether it's left or right or switching off while you're riding. So this is very important to learn. If you're having trouble doing this, tips I would give is this. Lean the wheel 20 to 30 degrees inward a little bit. So you're almost like riding the edge of the tire slightly to make this happen. And go for wider, but don't go too wide to where you're too far away from this leg. As long as your leg is locked in, putting pressure down and out a little bit on your foot and locking your calf or your just above your ankle into the side of the shell. 
that's going to really help you be successful at getting this half moon tutorial worked out. So it's important for me to say right off the bat that a lot of people recommend going near a wall like this um, and starting off to start writing on it. You can, but I think that there's a real potential for it becoming a crutch and it's hard to get off the wall and start riding away from it. But if you do, it might be important to just do it just for a couple of minutes just to see what it feels like the mechanics of the wheel are when you're going forward and going backwards. So it's kind of like this. When you're at the wall, mount based on the mount technique I show you in a minute here. Um, get up on the wall. I think the outside foot should be away. I mount with my right, so I try to start this way. Use your hands to just lean forward and obviously just do like one hand on the wall like this to move up down the wall. But don't do it for too long because it's gonna become a crutch. And then when you're trying to leave the wall, this has become so, so scary. So do it for a couple of minutes just to see what it's like. After that, follow my instructions step by step and uh, it'll be very successful. Really quick, I wanted to talk about mounting before we get into the next step. This is kind of like an intermediate step. I'm gonna turn the camera down and show you what I mean. But mounting is pretty simple, but it takes probably some of the biggest sort of like muscle strength to learn how to do and sort of like mind over matter scenario. The whole like getting on for the first time thing is a big thing for people. Um, but I'm gonna give you some quick little tips here to help you sort of overcome that as fast as possible. And uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So when you're first mounting your wheel, you're gonna want to be sure not to hold the handle the whole time. You want to put your dominant foot on, get it situated, like I said before, center between the front and the back. My stance is a little skewed. I ride my right foot slightly forward and my left foot slightly back. You're welcome to try that, but uh, I, I recommend for most people beginning just do centered on that pedal. So once you're mounted like this, what you're gonna wanna do is take this wheel, which you can see is basically upright here, and lean it about 30 degrees inward. And this is gonna be a success to you mounting. So it needs to be leaned over a little bit. So then you lock your leg against the side. And basically you're changing the center of gravity from straight up and down to down through the middle between the unicycle and your leg. Because if you think about it, if you were to just push down on this while it was straight up and down, it would spin the wheel out around you, which some of you might have already done before and been like, how do you do this? So the key to this is leaning it in to some degree, about, about 30, but give it whatever feels best, but enough to where it's not falling off of your leg. You still need to be locked to the side of your leg. This is how you mount. So when you go to step on in the later steps, you'll see that this allows me then straighten it up as I go, as I'm getting on. I know it probably looks so easy to you right now and you're thinking, how did he do that? It looked too easy. Uh, it's hard to break it down when you've been doing it for years, but I'm trying really hard. Um, but yes, the key is leaning it in about 30 degrees. And then you basically, as you push off, your leg will straighten it out. It will become perpendicular with the ground and it'll be straight up and down, and that's how you'll ride. So hopefully this helps before we dive into the sort of one leg mount. All right, step number two is stopping and starting. This can actually be applied anywhere throughout the process, but I just wanted to put it up front uh, so you can figure out how it all works, all right? So on any unicycle, to start, you have to put pressure forward. This is my front where my GoPro is. To go forward and you put pressure on the back or lean back to stop. Go for that sort of like leaning your upper body a little bit first and a little bit of your lower body. Um, but if that's not working at all, it sometimes helps to think about putting pressure on your toes. So once you've mounted, to get going, to get started, uh, since you're gonna be mounting in a second anyways, uh, you basically need to Go and lean your upper body forward. So the more you lean and the more you put more pressure on your toes, the faster you go. Um, and then obviously to undo all that, AKA slow down and stop, you need to release that forward pressure and lean backwards. And I think for a lot of wheels, that also means uh, making sure you have some grip. Here I have these grippy pads. 
um, but your wheel might have some leather or something, so just make sure that you're able to sort of get some friction to, so you can lightly grip it when you're leaning backwards to stop. So for stopping, my tip is definitely put pressure on your heels, but it's a, it's a lot, it's not that specific. You can't just put, you can't just crank down on your heel, because you'll see if you just do that, it'll fly backwards. You could overpower your motor and it could shut off on you, depending on how powerful your wheel is. Um, but also, like, you might just fall off the back. So you have to sort of learn how to keep, I think, your waist pretty stationary and lean your upper body back and keeping your legs kind of locked in still, but then also putting some pressure on your heels. Again, this is all for the beginner. When you become more advanced, it becomes more intuitive and you can do more heavier or extreme leans and pushes on your heel. But to start off with, everything's a little more subtle, but I'm trying to give you a, a, an overarching picture here. This is a 16 inch diameter tire, so it's gonna be a lot more responsive than if you were to go with like an MSX or an 18 inch type wheel to begin with. I don't recommend that. Uh, some guys do it, it's fine. Um, but if you're a beginner, you're probably looking at a 14 or 16 inch uh, diameter tire, in which case it's gonna be extremely responsive on a 14, pretty responsive on a 16, and not so responsive on an 18 when you're starting out. So um, definitely keep that in mind. Also, a lot of these wheels, if not all of them, have modes. So you have modes you can shoot in, you have soft mode, medium mode, hard mode. That's what Gotway calls it, so I have a Gotway here. Um, in motion might call something different if they even have it, I forget. Uh, but King Song calls there's like beginner, intermediate, and advanced or something. Those modes will dictate how the motor responds. Like my favorite is soft mode uh, because when I go to lean in to speed up or slow down, the wheel actually leans with you, whereas like on a hard mode, it stays stationary the whole time. It doesn't tilt with you. I think that the soft mode is more powerful. It's more beneficial for aggressive stopping and stuff. And it might even help when you're first starting out if you're having trouble. A lot of guys I've tried to teach can't <laughs> figure out how to move forward. Soft mode might help you because it'll sort of start to tilt you and get you in that direction. This is my right foot's dominant, my right foot is on, my left foot is off. You're just gonna do this first. Take some few baby steps and increase the length and distance that you do this exercise every like couple of steps if you can. The faster you get used to this, the better it off it is for you. Don't get stuck doing the first little like baby inch for like a day. That, that would be a horrible idea. So first you're gonna start off just doing this. Take a little step, plant your foot. Take a little step, plant your foot. Take a little step, plant your foot. Your first steps might be smaller or bigger than mine, but eventually you wanna make it so you're traveling an even further or a farther distance gradually over time so that you learn what it feels like to eventually do this. I would say once you've done this pretty far, like a few feet, you're definitely ready for the second foot. And as you can imagine, after you're doing this for a few feet, the next step is putting your foot on. And then you're gonna have, it's once, I guarantee you, once you put your second foot on, your, your mind is gonna freak out, so just prepare for that. Uh, and it's gonna be like square one over again, so this is why this is like, Two parts, if you will. Part two of my one foot mounting scenario is with the two feet. That is gonna feel like you're starting from scratch again with the one foot, because it's kind of a new feeling. But you're learning how to maneuver this thing, putting enough pressure on the left and the right at different times. So that's the difference about this muscle memory is you have to learn when to put enough pressure here and not so much here, or vice versa, in different scenarios. Next step is turns. I don't know what number it is, but <laughs> I'm horrible at numbering these things. The next step is turns. Um, so to explain this, it involves your knees. Once you've mastered going straight, you're gonna be tempted to want to turn to correct yourself. Um, I do have to say that this is where the sort of like 
more pressure on this foot versus this foot thing comes into play. The key to success is learning which foot to let drop and which foot to bend. And I'll show you what I mean. When you're making a left turn, this is basically what I'll do. And I'll try to see if you can hear me. If not, I'll do a little voice over here to explain. So when I'm turning left, I'm gonna drop my left leg and bend my right knee. So this one is almost straight. So on my right foot, I'm putting less pressure. My left foot, I'm putting more pressure. And my left leg is dropped, and my right leg has my knee bent, and it's a little up. Obviously, this is like to varying degrees. So you can do a little bit of a turn or a big, tight carve, and that involves letting the wheel lean even more, because you have to let it sort of freely lean between your legs, and your leg catches it. So here's what I mean. In riding, you don't want to be tight to it. You want to have it to be able to have some room to do something like this if you needed to. You're not going to, but if you needed to. That way, when you go to turn, you're not falling over. The, you let the wheel lean into your leg as you lean as well, and you maneuver your knees. If I'm going straight here, I let the wheel sort of fall, and I lean. My, my leg goes down, my, my right knee goes forward, and my upper body leans with it a little bit. The exact same applies for the other turn. Dropping my right leg down, my left knee pops out a little bit. Most pressure is on my right now and a little bit of pressure on my left because you have to be able to put an opposing pressure down. And this is how you turn. So it's super important not to stand gripped tight to the sides to where you're so close to it that your body physically has to fall over to turn. You want to have a bit of a loose stance so that the wheel can sort of lightly move and maneuver when you put pressure on your feet between your legs. So part of that turn, as I said, just to recap, is to let it lean, push down on the one side a little bit so where the, the wheel leans and touches your leg, and then your body and your leg lean more as you're putting just a little bit of pressure on the opposing side that's the outer leg, if you will. Same thing for the other side. Again, these are just beginner tips to learn how to turn. In my advanced tutorial, which I have online already, um, I teach you how to eventually like lock your outer leg against it for sharper, tighter, faster speed turns. But just for learning, follow this right here, this tutorial right here. Another quick tip um, when you're first learning to go straight is to, if you're starting to fall to the left, and this is where you start to sort of merge or blur the line between going straight and learning how to turn, which you you should blur this line. It, should, it shouldn't be a, you know, very analog stepping, like well, I learned straight, now I learned turning. Like there should be a blurred line between the two. Anyways, uh, if you're falling left, the general knowledge is to turn your wheel or lean, somehow get the wheel to go into the way you're falling. Just like a bicycle, if you're falling left, if you were to turn into it, it will right you a little bit. So that's totally acceptable to be doing sort of a little bit of this if you're starting to fall when you're learning how to go straight. Um, I'll kind of show you what I mean. If I'm going here and it's falling left, turn into it. You might end up doing a bit of a donut, but it teaches you some little bit of valuable, you know, subtle twisting and turning. Just like when you're driving in a car, like you're always doing a little bit of this. If you like Seinfeld like me, you've probably seen and you laughed at just the incessant this in that show. You're kind of doing that with the wheel when you're going straight at slower speeds. When you get faster, you don't have to do all this correction nonsense. Um, so again, you have to be going fast enough to sort of make the going forward work well. Uh, you can't, get, can't go too fast too early and you can't go too slow when you're first starting. Definitely use your arms if you need to when you're starting out. I still use them and I've been doing it for years. Eventually you won't look as nerdy, but the key is, no matter what, you'll always look like a nerd on this, and that's totally okay. Woo. And this about wraps it up for my learn how to ride an electric unicycle 101 tutorial. Do a kickflip! Let's go talk to this guy, it might be fun. What is that thing? I'll tell you if you do a kickflip. Can you do one? I could make the board do one, but I could never land one, to oh. tell you the truth. Uh, it's an electric unicycle. Nice!
Yeah. All right. Yeah, man, it's the only way to get around. <laughs> cool. Sometimes interactions like that in New York end up being um, weird or confrontational, but it was, it's nice here. People generally have no idea what this stuff is here, where I feel like most people in New York at this point have seen something like it. Cause it's New York, there's a lot of odd and weird stuff, but that guy generally seemed to have never seen this before, which is kind of cool to sort of explain to people and sort of get the word out, because these things are like the most fun for recreation and they're great for commuting. Um, if you, again, if you live, this has nothing to do with this tutorial at all, but if you live in a nice place like Florida or California or Arizona or Colorado or just name the beautiful places in the U.S. or wherever you live. I mean, you just get nice views and you're just cruising along, man. Just glad. Once again, that wraps it up for this tutorial. And I think I'm getting some sun somewhere in my neck. Oh yeah, it's already there. It's done. Um, I hope that these tips have helped you. I hope that these, this little guidebook has helped you learn how to ride. Um, again, if you have any questions whatsoever on how to just get more granular, maybe in my head, about how some of the mechanics of this work, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe. There's always content coming out for my channel. Uh, it's not weekly or anything, but I try to get a few videos out, at least one a month. <laughs> Uh, and if you want to help support the channel so I can continue to make this content, uh, go to patreon.com slash EVX, I believe is what it is. If I'm wrong, I've definitely put the link down below here. Uh, you can go give there and support the channel. Uh, but let me know. If you like the video, give it a like. If you don't like the video, just go away, I guess. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, yeah, so that's all I have for you for now. And keep riding.